This is CBN News Watch. And thank you so much for joining us on this Friday, August 20th. I'm Ephraim Graham. We begin this half hour with desperation continuing in Afghanistan as thousands of Americans and Afghan allies struggle to get out of the country. This all comes as the Biden administration continues to face fallout at home and abroad for its handling of the troop withdrawal. Jennifer Wishon explains. As many as 15,000 Americans and tens of thousands more Afghans who helped the U.S. military remain on the ground in Afghanistan, desperate to escape the Taliban. U.S. troops have restored some order inside the airport, but outside, panic continues. Reports that at least 12 people have been killed this week due to gunfire or stampede as the Taliban blocks people, even some Americans with passports, from getting through checkpoints. President Biden says no matter when U.S. troops withdrew, chaos was sure to follow. Getting out would be messy no matter when it occurred. But a classified cable from the U.S. Embassy in Kabul to Secretary Blinken July 13th warned of the Taliban's swift gains and the collapse of the Afghan military and called for speeding up evacuations. Now the president faces criticism from America's NATO allies. This is the greatest debacle that NATO has seen since its foundation, and it is an ethical change we are facing, said Armin Laschet, who's expected to become the next German chancellor. In Britain, members of parliament united to hold President Biden in contempt, accusing him of throwing the UK and everybody else into the fire in a move they fear will embolden Russia and China. Like many veterans, this last week has been one that has seen me struggle through anger and grief and rage, the feeling abandonment of not just a country, but the sacrifice that my friends made. And now America's European allies are looking inward. Frustrated with Biden's unilateral move, they say damaged and humiliated NATO. We can set out a vision, clearly articulated, for reinvigorating our European NATO partners to make sure that we are not dependent on a single ally, on the decision of a single leader. And this afternoon, States President America Biden is set to update Americans on evacuation efforts. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News. Retired Navy SEAL Marcus Luttrell served in Afghanistan. He became known worldwide as the lone survivor of a deadly battle in the mountains of that country. Luttrell had a message for President Biden. What's your message to Joe Biden? I'm praying for you, sir. Do the best you can. Get that G.I. Joe on. Come on, we got some, we got some boys and girls still over there, man. We got to go get them. We got to go get them, and we're doing that. I think the American people need to take a deep breath. We got, we've been through a lot. And this just kind of added fuel to it, to the fire. So I tell all of our people out there, just take a deep breath. Latrell wrote about his experience in Afghanistan in the New York Times bestseller, Lone Survivor. President George W. Bush awarded him the prestigious Navy Cross for valor. Turning now to a gold star father, Billy Vaughn. He lost his son, Aaron, in a Navy, in, in, Navy SEAL in Afghanistan. Faith Nation anchor Jenna Browder spoke with Billy about his own personal tragedy in Afghanistan. You say your son lost his life because of government missteps in Afghanistan. Can you tell us about that? Well, thank you very much for having me. Um, well, I think uh, it speaks for itself. Uh, the same, uh, same administration, uh, the Obama-Biden administration uh, was in charge now, uh, Joe Biden. Uh, and that's absolutely right. Uh, they did. The rules of engagement, uh, not uh, allowing our... Uh, war fighters to defend themselves, tying their hands behind their back. No pre-assault fire on the night that they uh, went in uh, on their mission. Uh, AC-130 requested multiple times to take out the men on the ground, but because of the rules of engagement, they were denied. And uh, it's just not my son. It was everybody on board that chopper. And there's story after story during the years of Obama about how the uh, how, how the men were not uh, allowed to defend themselves. Men and women weren't allowed to defend themselves. And the numbers skyrocketed from the Bush years through the Obama years. And uh, now we see this. Uh, well, there's no word to describe what uh, for me, at least, what's taking place in Afghanistan today. It's just, you know, it's beyond yeah. unbelievable. Un 
Billy, what do you make of what we're seeing right now in Afghanistan? You know, some of these images at the airport in Kabul and the streets of Kabul. And, you know, to think that that's Kabul, this is there. This is a, a large country. Um, it could be even worse in other parts. Well, yeah. So I'm, I don't know what to think. It's uh, sad. It's it, listen, it's scary for it should be scary for every American citizen. Uh, that this man is in the White House. He's in charge of national security. It's it's clear that he either doesn't have a clue or he's uh, too smart and stupid to accept any advice and, and uh, you know, ever admit that he's wrong. I mean, I, I'm not a military expert by far. I'm just a father. But I can sit here just listening to what he said a while ago about there be no way to prevent chaos. Well, what if we'd have kept uh, Bagram Air Base? An American air base there where we could do many things from, where we could defend and we could launch missions in the future and where we could get people inside there and we could get our people out with as many flights as we needed to. I mean, that's just, you know, that's just one thing. And now, now we've betrayed uh, the Afghan people. Their country is not safe for them to live in after countless blood and treasure shed by uh, our American war fighters. Uh, I, I believe the citizens of this country have been betrayed by Mr. Biden, by General Milley and by, uh, uh, Mr. Austin and other uh, high-up political military leaders, I think uh, I think some answers need to uh, need to come forward about what's happened in Afghanistan. And by the way, not just answers, there needs to be some accountability and maybe some uh, uh, maybe some punishment for those in charge. This is uh, this is just too much for the American uh, citizen to stomach. I believe we we are embarrassed before the world. Uh, we are sick and tired of being lied to. We are sick and tired of the the uh, press conferences right now where, where they talk down to American citizens and to journalists. And, you know, enough is enough. There's no reason for this. Uh, just about a minute left. But, Billy, you know, they're going to do congressional investigations starting next week. Uh, what do you hope comes from that? Well, I'm not uh, I'm not too thrilled about congressional investigations based on the way they've gone in the past, especially, you know, of uh, Demo Democrat uh, <laughs> politicians. Uh, I don't know what else we can do. I, I would like to see some attorneys and some American citizens uh, do something to, to, to demand answers and an investigation take place. I hope Congress does its job, but. Uh, I'm not going to hold my breath waiting on that. I, I hate to sound so negative, but, you know, that's the way it is. All right, Billy Vaughn, uh, we thank you so much for your time and for your son Aaron's service. Thank you. Thank you. Israel's new prime minister will meet with President Biden next week. It will be Naftali Bennett's first official visit to the White House. And joining us now is Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl to talk about this pivotal moment. So, Julie, uh, what is the goal of this meeting between the president and the prime minister? Well, you know, uh, from the so this is the first time that Biden and Bennett will actually meet. Um, Bennett says the, it's about de determining the approach the, of this partnership between Israel and the United States. Um, the, the U.S. has also kind of echoed that and said that it's, it's about strengthening their partnership between the two. Now, for Bennett, that has a lot to do with Iran. Um, there, he said that it's very, very important for them to stop the negative regional actions of Iran which would include destabilizing terrorism. It supports terrorists across the Middle East and, of course, preventing them from getting a nuclear weapon. Um, the White House has also talked about, about uh, uh, the Palestinian-Israeli issue, which is kind of not really on uh, Israel's agenda at this point. Um, you know, uh, former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu posted on Facebook that in 2013, former Secretary of State John Kerry had uh, offered for him to come to Afghanistan and see what the U.S. was doing there. But uh, Netanyahu understood that, that they were presenting this as a model for how to deal with the Palestinian issue, and he knew it would collapse and fail, and it did. Mm. Now, this meeting follows Afghanistan's fall to the Taliban and Israel's 11-day war with Gaza back in May. And, of course, as you mentioned, regional tensions also rising between Israel and Iran. What is Israel hoping the United States will do in light of these events? I, I think, you know, Israel really wants the U.S. to take a tough, tough stand with Iran and it, really to show their muscle, I think, really, you know, and make decisions. Of course, they would hope that the U.S. would not reenter the Iranian nuclear deal. 
whether that that, that or, happens or not, we will we'll come to see. Uh, what can we look forward to this evening on Jerusalem Dateline, Julie? Well, we have a story about the, how the Taliban takeover is really inspiring terrorists like Hezbollah and Hamas across the Middle East. Also, Poland and Israel had a diplomatic uh, impasse this week after Poland passed a law preventing Holocaust survivors from reclaiming their properties uh, that were confiscated during the Holocaust. And we're also going to take a look at the fires that have burned more than 6,000 acres outside Jerusalem this week. All right, Julie, thank you so much. I want to remind you at home that, of course, you can see Jerusalem Dateline at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time on the CBN News Channel. I want to turn now back to Washington, D.C. A suspect is in custody after police responded to a bomb threat near the U.S. Capitol building. They say the suspect is Floyd Ray Roseberry from North Carolina. The streets near Capitol Hill were closed for hours after Thursday's threat. Both the House and Senate are in recess, but some congressional staffers were alerted to remain calm and to re relocate to other buildings through underground tunnels. Police have yet to reveal a motive. We do know uh, that um, Mr. Uh, uh, Roseberry has had some losses of, of family. In his, uh, I believe his mother uh, recently passed away. And uh, we spoke with uh, members of his family, and there were other issues that uh, he was dealing with. Investigators are looking at a video that was allegedly posted to Facebook by Roseberry during the standoff. North Carolina is grieving two lives lost and missing dozens of people after the powerful storms ripped through the western part of the state. Crews are searching for signs of life as the East Coast braces for another batch of bad weather. CBN's Brody Carter reports. The damage that they have seen is crippling. Floodwaters, mudslides and tornadoes have swept across the Blue Ridge and Smoky Mountain communities of western North Carolina. I lost everything. My clothes, my jewelry. Everything. Haywood County, a tourist destination just west of Asheville, was hit the hardest. Heavy rains from Tropical Depression Fred washed away roads, bridges, and entire communities. We came out with our lives, but that was it. Almost 100 people were saved by rescue operations via boat and aircraft. Those residents are our community members. They're our family. They're our friends. Governor Roy Cooper issued a state of emergency for eight North Carolina counties to speed up recovery and relief operations. Lifelong residents say the damage far exceeds that of Hurricanes Ivan and Francis in 2004. Some of the worst destruction in Haywood County that I've seen in my life. As Fred drops another five inches over New York State and Boston, the Atlantic coast is preparing for more storms. Fred is out of the picture. Grace is heading into Mexico. Henri's our next big problem. Joe Bastardi with weatherbell.com says Henri will likely intensify Saturday, warning southeast New England to keep a close eye on the North Atlantic. It will push so much water and so much wind up in front of it that uh, it's a two, three day siege. That was our Brody Carter reporting. Henry might actually become a Category 2 hurricane as it works its way up toward New England. It may intensify Saturday before finally leaving Monday. Coming up, a picture is worth a thousand words, but what can two reveal? Coming up, what an author has to say after looking at photographs of Jerusalem taken 100 years apart. October 1st, 1961, history was made when a tiny station began transmitting the first signals of the Christian Broadcasting Network. CBN, the Christian Broadcasting Network. And now, a new era has begun with the all-new CBN News Channel. Just moments ago, the Iron Dome intercepted an incoming rocket right on the Gaza border. And ministering in this area, spiritual warfare is definitely involved. A 24-7 news network, bringing you the news you want from a source you can trust. In Kenya, 40% of the medical services are actually provided by these Christian hospitals. Let's talk about the economy. Believers here are joining together to win people to Jesus Christ. All your favorite shows now in one place. Go to CBNNewsChannel.com to find out how to get the CBN News Channel on your TV all day, every day. CBN News. Mm.
Life is better with a good night's sleep. Get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. Life, it's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it, I came to give you life, life to the fullest. Life in your family, life in your finances, life in your body, mind, and spirit, life in your everyday. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life. Live it fully. CBN.com. Jerusalem then and now, an author and photographer tell the history of the holiest city in the world and its current revival on the way to becoming the center of the world's attention. So what does Jerusalem rising mean in terms of biblical prophecy? Our Chris Mitchell explains. Author Doug Hershey uses past and current photographs to show the extraordinary transformation of Jerusalem over the past 175 years. The book continues Hershey's unique look at prophecy and the Holy Land. Much like Israel Rising documented the revival of the land, Jerusalem Rising is documenting the uh, fulfillment of, or at least the beginning processes of these biblical prophecies about Jerusalem being restored and what it's leading to. Hershey and adventure photographer Eden Ram combed the city for just the right angles to capture its past and present. Head in, lined up the top, there he goes. Looking at, uh, you can kind of look through the fence here. It'll look better when we um, you see the actual photos, but some of all of that stuff right in there is, uh, is what he's getting a shot of from back in the early 1900s. To be able to go to some of these locations and find the exact locations where a photographer set up 175 years ago to capture what Jerusalem looks like and then go back today to the exact same location. Some of the oldest photos of Jerusalem ever taken were from 1844 and we have several of those in Jerusalem Rising and all of those I don't think have ever been recreated ever. One of those before and after photos takes place here just outside the Jaffa Gate of Jerusalem's old city walls. It looks back from this spot towards what's known as the Tower of David. Hershey says most any city on earth may look different over the course of 100 years, but Jerusalem is unique. There's no other city on earth that's had its history foretold from its destruction to its desolation to a revival as a world player. So to be able to see all of that beginning to unfold in our day is really amazing. And so that's a lot of what's been documented in Jerusalem Rising. Hershey says some of those prophecies can be seen on the streets here. In Zechariah 8, God says that he's going to return to the city and he's going to dwell with his people, which is a, a profound statement for one of the prophets to say that God's saying, I'm going to return to Jerusalem and dwell with my people. He says that the old men and old women will dwell safely in the streets, leaning on their canes, and the children will be playing in the streets, and the nations will begin to flood to Jerusalem. And before COVID, Israel set records for tourism. Never before in history have the nations flooded to Jerusalem the way that they are in our day. And now, clearly, in Zechariah 8, it's in the context of coming to worship the king in Jerusalem, but it's undeniable that these are very beginning stages, historically, that we're seeing unfold in the city that have just never happened before. Hershey says, if we want to understand Jerusalem, we must look to the scriptures. Ultimately, if we continue reading the scriptures, if we believe what the prophet said, Jerusalem is going to be a seat of ruling power for a Jewish king. Ezekiel 5.5 says that God has placed Jerusalem in the center of the earth. So locationally, it's already in the center of the earth. And one day soon, and even beginning now, it's already becoming the center of the world's attention. A city that for thousands of years has stood at the crossroads of history and prophecy. Jerusalem has been conquered and reconquered multiple times. It's changed hands over 40 times. It's been completely leveled at least twice. There's been literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years where the city has just laid desolate, according to eyewitness accounts. Now we're at a time where things are starting to revive. So prophetic words from Zechariah 8 or Isaiah or any of these prophets about Israel, about Jerusalem, where once we thought were allegorical or spiritual or just abstract concepts, 
we're finding that God is doing exactly what he said. Never before have these prophecies been fulfilled in such a dramatic and significant way, and it's happening in our day in a really powerful and unique way. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, the Jaffa Gate, Jerusalem's Old City. And still ahead right here on CBN News Watch, CBN Sports Director Sean Brown joins us to talk us through a controversial rule coming out of the NFL. That's coming up next. Hey, if you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm gonna teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. It's about the competition. I kind of put that pressure on myself, and I think people had expectations. It's about overcoming. We use this phrase all the time, keep chopping, keep practicing hard. It's about going the distance. You know, I think as a father, it's my job, you know, to lead. Just be the best husband and father I can be. Watch Going the Distance with Sean Brown Saturday night at 7.30 on the CBN News Channel. Orphan's Promise is committed to loving and serving at-risk children, to helping keep families together, and to creating opportunities for strong and sustainable communities around the world. We're working in over 60 countries around the world, and with your help, we can do even more. There's an old African proverb I love that says, if you want to run fast, run alone. But if you want to run far, run together. At Orphan's Promise, we want to run far so we can touch the lives of as many orphaned and vulnerable children as possible. But we don't want to go alone. We're out to change the world, one child, one family, one community at a time. Will you join us? Each year, the NFL Rules Committee reviews, tweaks, and augments elements of the game in an effort to mold football to the more to the league's image. And this year, the NFL is asking officials to pay greater attention to taunting on the field. Here to describe the backlash from the decision is CBN Sports Director Sean Brown. So, Sean, one columnist wrote, "This is an affront to personal expression." What do you think? <laughs> I have, well, I, I think yes. You know, in a way. Uh, but I think it's more about presenting the NFL as more of a professional league. Um, it's about really just trying to reduce conflict on the field, all the fighting, all the all the, those type of uh, tensions that can happen. But it's a physical game. And so um, uh, Washington football coach Ron Rivera had a great perspective and talked about the children watching. Those Pee Wee players, those Pop Warner players, they're idolizing these uh, professional athletes. And so the league is just really just trying to prevent, is trying to present the league is more professional and reducing the amount of conflict on the field. So that's taunting. Do these rules restrict players from expressing joy? Well, it's not, it's not that players, not at all. And that's not that players can't celebrate. They just can't say, you know, they can't talk against each other. You know, get off me. You can't stop me. You can't take control. You know, you can't take command, son. You know, you can't just, uh, once you celebrate to get in the end zone, you get a first down. You don't, you can celebrate just not at, the opposing team. And so it alters the game a little bit, but again, it's all about presenting the league as, as more professional. Gotcha. What can we look forward to this weekend on going the distance? You know, Ephraim, we're, I'm going to be talking with uh, pro golfer, Jimmy Stanger, who's on the cusp of making the PGA tour. And he's already got his priorities in order and he's making an impact around the world by building churches. So a really exciting story. I'm also going to be talking, uh, doing some reflections on uh, coach uh, Bobby Bowden with one of his former players. So excited to, uh, to show that. Great. Looking forward to that. I want to remind you, you can catch Going the Distance with Sean Brown this weekend on the CBN News Channel. It begins at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Saturday and then on Sunday at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. Coming up, a classic toy store making a big comeback. We've got the details for you after the break. I am 
region's first ROTC graduate student. I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Wednesday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. How would you like to get a redo on your health, on your body, on your arteries, so you could have the energy you had 20 years ago? The great news is you can. I'm Dr. Mike Roizen, chair of the Wellness Institute at the Cleveland Clinic. I've written four New York Times bestsellers, but even better than having to read all that, you can listen to this DVD and watch it. Protect your heart? Yes, you can. Here's how. Go to CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000 for your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Let the medical experts show you their new discoveries on how to avoid heart disease and even reverse it. Easy steps to uncover the hidden dangers in your medicine cabinet, reduce stress, and get a complete do-over for your health. Call 1-800-700-7000. That's 1-800-700-7000. Or go to CBN.com to claim your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Check out the CBN News Daily Rundown podcast each weekday with me, Caitlin Burke. Click on the show tab at CBNNews.com where you can listen and subscribe. Some good news on the American jobs front. The latest numbers show a slight drop in the jobless rate down about a half percentage point at 5.4 percent. That is the lowest it's been since the pandemic began. The bigger concern right now is inflation and how it might affect hiring and everyday life. The Consumer Price Index measures inflation, which has jumped more than 5 percent in the last year. Toys R Us is teaming up with Macy's to open toy stores in more than 400 department stores. Its mascot, Jeffrey the Giraffe, will welcome shoppers to the new shops, which will be built inside Macy's stores. Thursday's announcement did not mention how big the shops will be, but did say that the physical locations will be ready next year. Until then, you can, of course, go online and begin shopping at Macy's.com slash Toys R Us. Before we go, time for your Friday Faithful, and I want to leave you with this thought. Without God, nothing is possible, but with God, there is no impossibility. Embrace Him, rest in Him, and live for Him. With that word, I encourage you to make today a fantastic Friday, and be sure to have yourself a wonderful weekend, and do it on purpose. That's going to do it for this edition of CBN News Watch. You can always find more of our programs on the CBN News Channel at any time, as well as online at CBNNews.com and the CBN News app. We'd love to know what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can email us, newswatch at cbn.com. And, of course, you can always reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We look forward to seeing you right back here come Monday.